Hello and welcome back to the Garrett Ashley Mullet Show. This is Garrett Ashley Mullet coming to you from Greeley, Colorado. Today is August 25th, 2021, and this will be the second reaction video I've ever done. Just getting into this, just trying it out. Bear with me. But my wife sent me this one on Instagram, or at least a small clip of it. I haven't watched the whole video. I watched the small clip, the excerpt from this video that we're going to watch. We're going to get some reaction from the former British commander in Afghanistan. He's now with, uh, I think, a third-party security contract company. But Mark Levin's got him on. And this is a recent interview talking about the implications of America pulling out of Afghanistan. American President Joe Biden pulling out without sufficient coordination with our allies, it would seem, and with undue deference to our enemies, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. So let's go ahead and dive right in, and I'll pause every now and then to give you some reaction. Welcome back, America. We're back with uh, retired Colonel Richard Kemp. Among his many uh, career uh, stop-offs was uh, Afghanistan as commander of British forces. Uh, Colonel Kemp, my question to you is, um, given what's taken place now in Afghanistan and it's ongoing, uh, and uh, assuming that Joe Biden stays on the same course, what are the consequences for the United States, Britain, NATO, the free world, and that area of the world now? I think the consequences of what's just happened and what's still happening are absolutely devastating for the whole of the Western world. Um, I, I mentioned earlier the, 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 the catastrophic effect on NATO. NATO is a very important military alliance. Many presidents have, have, uh, con uh, have uh, criticized it for not pulling its weight, of the European member states in particular, and they're right to do so. But President Biden has just completely destroyed its credibility, totally destroyed it. Okay, so this is important. What he's saying right there is really important. And it's difficult sometimes as Americans for us to understand the gravity of certain things because we engage in so much hyperbole. Here in America, we're known around the world for being hyperbolic. Everything is the most, the biggest, the greatest, the worst, the extreme. And the Brits are not that way. So quick little point here. When a Brit tells you that something is catastrophic, it means a little bit different what uh, an American would mean when they say that something is catastrophic. Trump, call him what you will, like him, love him, hate him, can't stand him. He represented America in a little bit of an exaggerated sense, but not much for the common everyday man. When we travel around the world, we get we get flack, especially from Europeans who are much more understated, at least the Brits are, much more understated. They like to be subtle. So Colonel Richard Kemp, former chairman of the Cobra Intelligence Group, he's saying catastrophic, and we've just destroyed our credibility with the NATO alliance and competitors, threats around the world to NATO. Uh, single-handed and you know we're seeing we, what we face now is a a terrorist threat coming out of Afghanistan that is greater than the terrorist threat before 9-11 Jah wait 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 okay the terrorist threat before 9-11 led to 9-11 and we're talking about Al-Qaeda which is Arabic for the base these mujahideen angry at america for setting our infidel feet on muslim lands in part because we were there at the request of the saudi royal family and they didn't like that they didn't want us there we were there dealing with uh, saddam hussein in the first gulf war they didn't like that they didn't like that we support israel which is a Western nation, Western Jewish, non-Muslim nation, settled 
right smack dab in the center of the Arab world, in the center of the Muslim world. Guys with box cutters hijacked airplanes, flew them into buildings, killed over 3,000 Americans. That was pre-9-11. Afghanistan was a training ground for them. It was a safe harbor, a safe refuge for them. This guy's saying the situation now, I'll let him say what he's going to say, but he's saying the situation now is worse than that in Afghanistan. Jihadists around the world have been celebrating the events, and, and not least the president, not that it is a jihadist, but the president of Pakistan, Imran Khan, who himself celebrated it. He should be celebrating because Pakistan significantly funded uh, the Taliban throughout the campaign, while at the same time being paid vast amounts of money by America and Britain. Um, but they're, they're celebrating around the world. Hamas in, in Gaza are celebrating. That, okay, so right there, that little bit there, that was a little bit of British understatement. That's a, a little bit of a swipe at Western governments thinking they can pay countries like Pakistan to love us. We can pay them enough money and they're going to toe the line on the reforms that we think are important or they're going to do the things, keeping the peace in the region, providing a bulwark against extremism, et cetera, et cetera. We're giving Pakistan money and they were providing not just material support, which is another way of saying that money is going to Pakistan and then it's going right to the terrorists, right? Just cut out the middleman. Why don't we just pay these terrorists directly, right? Come on, guys. Like we need some milsim. Like we got to keep our guys in fighting shape. So we're going to pay you guys in a roundabout indirect way. Back to the video. What's happening here. Um, and, and they will be re-energized. They will see that their recruitment has been boosted. They will be reinvigorated and they will launch attacks around the world against our countries, as they did really when they were being inspired by the Islamic State. Af Al Qaeda and the Islamic State are strong in Afghanistan at the moment. Al Qaeda fought alongside the Taliban in recent battles. Isn't that funny? You might, the only one who thinks that that's odd that ISIS looks like they're going to take over the Middle East. They're terrorizing Europe. They're terrorizing us. They're launching attacks left and right. Every time you turn around, they're attacking Americans and Europeans and Westerners under Obama. Then Trump wins the presidency in 2016. And all of a sudden, we stop getting so many attacks from ISIS on, on us because they're busy fighting us in the Middle East because the United States armed forces were actually given a free reign, a free hand to deal with ISIS. We actually went after them. Imagine that. So you don't hear about ISIS really for several years during Trump's presidency. And now all of a sudden Biden's in office six months and ISIS is back and we've just surrendered Afghanistan to the Taliban. And, and also weapons and arms. I'm sure he'll get to that. But does anybody else feel like that's odd and maybe not desirable? They will operate freely. It doesn't matter what the Taliban say to you. They will allow the Al-Qaeda Al and the Islamic State to operate freely there. And they can operate more freely than they could before 9-11 because they know there's no fear of Western intervention now. That, that's finished. That's history. That's not going to happen again. They know that, and so they'll be even bolder than before. And jihadists from around the world will flock into Afghanistan to train, prepare, and launch attacks against the West. So the, the state of the terrorist threat is higher than it was at the height of the Islamic State's power when they controlled large parts of Syria and of Iraq. That's just one aspect of the situation. But wait, there's more. That's just one aspect of the situation. But he's not done yet, right? Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough that people who hate us and are content to kill men, women, and children to advance their Islamist goal of taking over the world, making the whole world to submit to Islam, now they have a safe harbor in Afghanistan? Isn't that enough? Let's see what else. 
situation. Uh, th there, there's no one really who is celebrating this situation more than uh, Russia and China. They're, they're the greatest cheerleaders for what's happened. They've helped to bring it about, but they, they now will be, will be emboldened themselves. They've done a great deal against the West, a huge amount against the West in the past. They now will look at the, the deterrent that the United States used to present, and they will see that they've got pretty much an open field to do almost whatever they like. Um, and, and those countries that we had hoped to entice onto our side, in the, uh, in, in, to, onto the, into the Western sphere, those countries um, will say, why would we do that? These people are clearly fair weather friends. Yes. We yes. Yeah. I, I, which should be, by our reckoning, more difficult, more challenging? Dealing with the Taliban, keeping a couple thousand at most of our forces in country. We've already built the infrastructure. We had already invested the time and the money and the blood and the sweat and the tears into building up air bases and having weapons, ammunition, vehicles, logistical details, infrastructure in place in Afghanistan. Just have to keep a little presence there to maintain it against the Taliban. We've trained and equipped 300,000 Afghanis. And we decide we're out. We're done. We're done. We're done and we're okay with leaving thousands of our own people in country without a plan to extract them immediately. And we're okay with, at least in the case of Joe Biden, allowing the Taliban to set the deadline for us on when we have to have everybody out by and now today the reports are, as of August 25th, that our people, Westerners, trying to get to the airport in Kabul to get out of the country are being interrupted. They're being blocked. And also the Taliban's not okay with Afghanis leaving the country. So you're here. If you're an Afghan who worked with coalition forces, who worked with the United States, who worked with our Western allies like the British, you served as an interpreter, a guide, offered intelligence. You got to stay. We'd like to have a word with you. And the word that Taliban and Al Qaeda and ISIS fighters are going to have with those folks is going to be bloody. And it's not going to be so much a conversation as it is torture and execution. And so now we let the... Taliban tell us whether we can get those people out. Really? Why? Why? And also, he's right. He's absolutely correct. What does South Korea conclude from this if North Korea is a bigger threat than the Taliban or China is a bigger threat than the Taliban? What does Japan conclude about this? What does Israel conclude about this? And it's ongoing problem with Iran in particular, but by no means only Iran. What do Eastern Bloc countries conclude from this if they would like to not be annexed by Russia? Why should anybody believe that America means what it says and says what it means and will stand by its commitments and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody who picks on our friends and messes with us. This makes us far, far, far less safe as a country. And this isn't just ourselves, we as Americans, that are going to have to reckon with what's just been done here in the past week and a half and is, is happening right now. Our allies are going to have to reckon with this. Oppressed, repressed, subjugated peoples who yearn to be free in these hostile countries with hostile governments, hostile foreign governments that don't like us very much, they're going to have to reckon with this because their countries are going to be emboldened to do whatever it takes to lock them down and ensure conformity. We can't rely on them. We can't trust them. And they will see Russia and China as being the more reliable ally than any country in the West. And so that will be 
extremely damaging for 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 and not not just ally right not just ally not even first and foremost ally for a lot of these countries it's going to be give me your lunch money and we can be friends okay that's not an alliance that is not <laughs> what china and russia have to offer is not an alliance except with people just as mean and nasty and awful as they are what china and russia have to offer is strategic bribes in the right places strategic assassinations in the right places threats of force and actual force to establish hegemonic control over the globe that that's what it is it's not they they won't be more attractive allies they will be emboldened aggressors against anybody and everybody they think they can bowl over which in the absence of American power asserting itself, in the absence of a capacity for American power to assert itself, because we just give away everything and lock our own people down and we want to... What? What? Our ability to wield power, and yet that was one of the reasons that President Biden gave for pulling out of Afghanistan, that um, he, he, he would focus more effort, he'd be able to focus more effort on um, on confronting China and Russia. Well, that's got that's he, this is a completely the reverse of what he expected to happen. Well, that's right, that's right. You, you're going to focus more on Russia and China and Iran. Meanwhile, you give up two plus trillion dollars worth of investment over two decades in the country that borders all three of those countries. To the west, you've got Iran. To the north, you've got Russia. To the east, you've got China. Bordered on all sides, Afghanistan has our biggest threats, our biggest challenges near at hand. And we had air bases and we had personnel. And now you're going to give all of that up, right? This is some really weird counterintuitive reverse psychology kind of asymmetrical warfare we're waging apparently against Iran, Russia, and China that we're going to give up our strategic position, our strategic foothold right at their doorstep so we can focus on keeping them in check. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's, there's so many other implications that I could go through. I won't go through them all because... Uh, I think those are probably the most severe implications. We're going to see China holding the upper hand over Afghanistan now, together with Pakistan. And they will use their influence together with Russia and Iran in Afghanistan. They will use that influence not only to enrich themselves by plundering Afghanistan, the um, uh, minerals earth. and resources, yep. but by using what they have there to hit against the West. Yep. So the whole world just became vastly more dangerous. The U.S., Government, the U.S. government, President Biden humiliated the United States. He humiliated the United States Army. In my opinion, and I, I don't say this lightly, and I've never said it about anybody else, any other leader in this position, people have been talking about impeaching President Biden. I don't believe President Biden should be impeached. He's the commander-in-chief of the U.S. Armed Forces, who's just essentially surrendered to the Taliban. He shouldn't be impeached. He should be court-martialed for betraying the United States of America and the United States Armed Forces. Can we do that? Is that an option? Anybody? Is that... Can, can we do that? Somebody look into that and get back with me. Because if that's an option, I'm... Yes, let's, let's do that. Let's court-martial him. He, at a minimum, should not be president of the United States of America. And I personally don't think that he won fair and square. Call me a conspiracy theorist if you want to. But there's a whole lot of stuff that just doesn't quite add up, doesn't smell right in the past year. My spidey sense tingles that he should not be president in so many ways. If we can court-martial him, I'm on board. Because this is treachery. This is treasonous. This is not, you, you can't tell me this is just mere incompetence. 
I don't buy it. And if it's cognitive decline, it ain't going to re-incline. It's, it's, if it's gone, the barn doors are open and the cows have gotten out. They're not getting out. They've gotten out because this is a catastrophic failure. He should not be making the decisions for not only our national security, but the joint security of our allies. It just absolutely should not be. Now, Colonel Kemp, I want to ask you a couple of questions here. If you're Taiwan now, or you're Ukraine dealing with Russia, or you're Israel dealing with Iran and a whole host of terrorists, uh, and you've been relying on the United States as an ally, you have a lot to worry about now, don't you? You have a lot to worry about. And the president of Taiwan made a statement in which she said that, uh, that, the, that we now need, in the light of what's been going in Afghanistan, we need now to look at strengthening our own defensive efforts. Um, and and that's, that's very telling in itself. Of course they should be defending themselves, but they are, are not capable of defending themselves against China. They do need the United States, and they're now wondering if they've got the United States. The same applies for, as you say, for Ukraine. Ukraine is in grave danger. Israel, other Gulf, sta or Gulf states in the Middle East are in grave danger because not only has President Biden uh, surrendered to the Taliban, he's also been appeasing Iran and encouraging Iran to get back into the nuclear deal that threatens all countries in the Middle East and that has led to an arms race in the Middle East. And those countries are not any longer relying on the US. They can't rely on the United States. And so I think, I think there's a, you know, it, it, it leads us to a, a very, very shaky and unstable situation because they recognize that Iran, as, as much as they're afraid, Iran is emboldened. So next time we have an apology tour, Americans, my fellow Americans, let's try this. Let's try going and apologizing to our allies. Instead of apologizing to our enemies whose butts we kicked when they were acting up and acting out and misbehaving, and they started it and we finished it, Next time we have an apology tour, how about we apologize for probably setting in motion World War III? Because I can actually get behind apologizing. As an American, I just want to assure the folks across the pond, our allies across the world, a whole lot of my fellow Americans are not okay with this. We are not happy about this. We are very, very distraught and very upset and very, frankly, embarrassed because this is wrong. This is wrong what is happening, has happened, and will continue to happen. And to be just entirely honest, we don't know what to do about it. We, we don't know what to do about it. Because what do you do? You get establishment political forces of both parties saying, there's nothing to see here. Carry about your daily lives, except they're jacking with our daily lives also they want to mandate left and right to us, and they want to they want to be more aggressive with us Americans at home than they are with jihadists around the world in a country that we invested. We like Americans like me invested two plus trillion dollars of our own money, and how many moms and dads? spending years away from their families, brothers, my brother, two brothers-in-law fought in the war on terror, cousins, friends. It, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? Iran has interests in Afghanistan anyway, but they're also emboldened by the weakness they've seen in the United States. And they, that will encourage them to be even more aggressive in the region. They will demand more on the JCPOA and the nuclear deal. They will push harder to destroy Israel by setting up bases of attack in Syria, by reinforcing their presence in Lebanon. They will uh, be, be doing, working harder yet against Saudi Arabia, which they've been at war with, a proxy war via Yemen. And they will, re, re, be, they will re energize their aggression across the region 
we will see great, great danger from Iran as well as other countries that are no longer deterred by the United States. We'll be right back. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe. Okay, well, thanks, Sean, but excuse me, I'm talking. Uh, no, in, in all seriousness, this is really distressing, and I got to leave it there. I got kiddos who uh, I need to go check on, see how they're doing, what they're up to, but it's really, really bothersome to us as Americans that we have children, we have wives, we have sisters and brothers, we have family and friends in this country who will be negatively impacted by the foreign policy, national security decisions that are being made. We absolutely have to have somebody who is on their A game and at peak optimal efficiency because it's not an easy job, but it's especially not an easy job when you're not all there anymore. So thank you very much, as always, for listening. If you have any thoughts, leave them below in the comments. Hit subscribe. Check out the GarrettAshleyMulletShow.com where you can find podcasts by yours truly. They're usually about 30 to 40 minutes long. Some go a little longer, some go a little shorter. But you can check out the GarrettAshleyMulletShow.com. Put your email in. You'll get email alerts when new episodes are out. Or you can go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts here shortly, or pretty much anywhere that podcasts can be found. Hit subscribe. Check it out. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you for listening. Until next time, God bless.